The first thing that people will realize is that Louisiana is not like the rest of the United States. When people walk in and they leave, they say, my God, I thought I was in the United States, but I guess I'm not. I've been here for 20 years, and uh, people call this my mistress. We were very fortunate in finding this place. We knew, the reason we saved it was because we knew in the 1870s, a teenager who lived a mile up the road, whose name was Alcy Forche, came into our still standing slave cabins and he wrote down the stories that later would be called the Burr Rabbit stories. The first slaves to come to Louisiana came in 1721 off of ships from Senegal. Um, Wolof speaking slaves uh, came to Louisiana with these stories. We knew about the Burr Rabbit connection 40 something years ago. We knew that the Burr Rabbit stories were co uh, collected in this area. And when this place uh, was abandoned, uh, we kept our eyes on it and then one day we found out it was going up for auction. We, we made an agreement with them to take over the small part of the property and uh, to preserve it and to restore it and to tell the stories of our lifestyle. This was white when we got here in 1993. We scraped away two coats of white paint and we found that. Scared us to death. We're booming now and uh, we get people from all over the world, give tours in six languages, and, uh, three tours a day in French. We did not know what, anything about the people who lived in the big house. But we went looking and we found 5,000 pages of documents about the people who lived here in Paris, France at the National Archives. And then we hit a jackpot. It was in St. Louis, Missouri, we discovered a book written by a woman who was born upstairs in 1861. Her name is Laura. Laura was born right here, Christmas Eve, 1861. Her family's in what they used to call high society. Here's Laura at Mardi Gras. She's dressed as the devil. That's a 141-year-old photograph. It does not take Laura long to grow up in this farm and know that the Creole plantation will destroy slaves and workers, but also easily, easily dehumanize the person running it. 85% of the inhabitants of a plantation like this before the Civil War are going to be enslaved men and women and children. In Louisiana, you want slaves, you have to give them adequate food, shelter, and clothing. You don't. If the Attorney General ever found that out, the law reads, confiscate the slave, sell them. We know the laws that they were bound under and how those laws basically were thrown out the window on plantations like this. Laura said um, those who lived, the slaves who lived close to the place who lived were basically domestic slaves. They got the best and the worst of the treatment. And then she says one incredible sentence in her book. She, re she writes, she says, the Civil War came, the Civil War left, and nothing changed on this place.